Yo, we are back. Season 24 has begun. We've got war number one for you. But first, guys, stick around for the end. The reveal of the season 24 four Loki card designs. Pretty cool, I think. Anyway, all right, back to the war. We're up against Space Bastards. I think we played this uh, alliance maybe once or twice before, but I uh, can't really remember. So we are facing Protect as the global here. I'm joining fairly late. Uh, this this war in general, we kind of got a late start. Um, I got assignments out pretty late. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be on path one in section two. I've got that Arcus that I'm going to be taking with a rank four five-star Dr. Doom. Uh, trust me, if I could have figured out a way to uh, have one of our 6-3 Dooms take that fight, I definitely would have done that. Um, but I couldn't. And my Dr. Doom, my rank 3 6-star Dr. Doom is on defense. So, alright, I've got the Doom, Apocalypse, and Quake team. And um, I'm going to be boosting up fairly big here. Uh, I am taking... In fact, I'm going to be boosting up like absolute maximum based on the boost that I have in my stash. Um, and the fight that I'm most worried for is a rank 3 Mole Man on node 25. That's primarily why I have Apocalypse. So in this first fight, I've got a man thing. I believe it's a rank three. I can't really remember. We're going to find out in just a second. But uh, last season, you guys know that I had a really, really ugly fight against this dude with Immortal Abomination. I played poorly, also mixed with passive AI and five out of five Mystic Dispersion. Now, it looks like this is a rank two. Yeah, this is a rank 2, not a rank 3. But anyway, no stubborn, so we can just Quake this thing. So, I am a little bit rusty with Quake. I haven't really been using her for much content. And I didn't really use her a whole bunch last season either. But uh, season 22, I was, I was on the money with Quake. I felt great with her all season. So, um, Man-Thing is, I would say, relatively easy to Quake. Uh, he's got that single hit heavy, and all of his attack motions are kind of like big, like super extra animated, and um, I think, you know, that kind of helps the player identify which attacks are coming. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is called Ironic Comedy. Uh, you're welcome. You can tip me if you want to. Uh, what was I saying about uh, big, big attacks being easy to identify? Well, ultimately, it's not going to matter because I am going to get through this fight. Spoiler alert. I think I just got to make it through this last Aftershock cycle. There he goes. So uh, I lost about the same amount of health as I would have lost if I ran uh, suicides, uh, full suicides, or, uh, you know. So I don't know. It's, it's not too bad. Here we have Masochism. Now, if I wanted to, I could have quaked this one also, but because I played so perfectly with Quake in the first fight, and primarily because I need to build up Apocalypse as much as I can um, to try to get an extra prowess, an extra genetic code for that Mole Man fight. So we're going in here with Apocalypse. He's great for Masochism because Masochism generally gets purified or a stun. Uh, debuff gets purified from Masochism, but... He reduces purification ability accuracy by 100%, so you never have to worry about masochism. It's pretty cool. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I do believe, actually, here, we're going to find out, because I am going to throw an SP1. I throw the weakness. Yeah. Um, yeah, masochism just does not apply to uh, Apocalypse. So, pretty sweet. But anyway, uh, this is a very, very easy, straightforward fight. Red Hulk is, uh, you know, he's, he's not really a great defender. Um, I, I imagine that he was placed here because uh, because of his physical resistance, um, especially at high sig. He, he is kind of not a great matchup for Quake. I mentioned earlier that I could have taken this fight with Quake. I could have just because this guy's a rank 2 and, um, you know, we're on a path fight. It's not like heavily health boosted or anything like that, but um, he can kind of trick some some Quake users if if they're not aware of the, his physical resistance, because it's pretty extreme, and Quake's Aftershock damage is all physical damage. So, anyway, alright. Here we go, Mole Man. This is the fight that I'm most worried for. This is really the only fight that I was worried for this, this war. 
But uh, yeah, it's a rank three, big, big mole man here. And this node has crumbling armor, force of will, that doesn't matter. But it's also got footloose and kinetic transference. So uh, this is one of the harder nodes on the map. Uh, Mole Man is great here because, um, you know, he can go unstoppable if you hit into his block. You can get cornered because of Footloose, um, and uh, you can't really hit into him to get some space. So, um, I think you're got, you guys are going to see Mole Man on this node quite a bit this season. In fact, I took this Mole Man in War 2. I know that I'm posting this video late, but uh, I had this exact same fight in War 2. I used Apocalypse there also. You guys will have to check that video out to see uh, how that fight went. But um, yeah, so my plan here, I've only got two genetic code, is um, he won't be able to purify any of my debuffs, which is great. Um, I definitely don't ever want to hit into him. As long as he's got monster mass, which is those little green uh, passives underneath his health bar. And um, basically when he throws a special, I, I'm just trying to give him space. And I wanted to get to my SP2, throw that first, and I'm going to end um, in a medium combo so that I can apply the degen. Um, the SP1, if you end in a medium, applies poison. So ending in a medium is going to apply damage over time effects, and then ending in a light attack is going to apply utility effects. Uh, the SP1 does weakness, and the SP2 does concussion. Uh, but this node has Force of Will, so Ability Accuracy Reduction is uh, doesn't apply here. So the Concussion, all it would do is give me an extra debuff for a little bit of extra burst damage on my special attacks with Apocalypse, but uh, not going to actually help me uh, manage his ability. So, alright, now he's in Frenzy, so if I were to get hit by him, uh, he's going to crit me to death, basically. And, uh, yeah, it goes down. So ultimately... Um, I was kind of kind of afraid for nothing there. I had, I think, probably the best matchup in the game for that fight in particular. Um, I'm not going to take this Havoc. Pete took that Havoc. And uh, I am going to take this Vision. It's a rank 3 Vision. Um, I removed Suicides for this fight. I'm not really worried about timing out. I just know it's going to be a long fight. And... Um, yeah, basically, I just want to try to get to the Doom Cycle, and it should be pretty easy here because, obviously, Arcus is going to have a lot of power gain buffs, and um, I, I am running 5 out of 5 Mystic Dispersion for this fight just so that I can keep recycling those SP3s so that I can keep that armor and stack a couple armors and uh, kind of make up for some of the lost damage since I'm using a rank 4 5-star champion here. This is the first time, I think, in Alliance War that I've used a rank 4 5-star champion uh, in a fight, and uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'd have to go back and look at my old war videos, but I, I think it's been like maybe ever. I don't know if I've ever used a force rank force champion. I don't know. Anyway, so <clears throat> all right, this is pretty funny though. So I'm gonna go doom cycle here. I really have to be careful not to overshoot my SP1, and boom, we're back to an SP3. That's pretty cool. Let's do it again. Let's see if we can end this fight before he ever gets off another attack, or before he ever even throws another attack. And I, I know the ending of this fight, of course, so uh, it's a little foreshadowing, but yeah. Um, so I'm really only doing one or two hits here before um, I throw the SP1 there, just because I am running Mystic Dispersion, and I'm getting so much power back, I don't want to overshoot it. If I were to overshoot it, I would be left with an SP2. I wouldn't have power drained him a little bit, and uh, that can get you into trouble against Argus. You could have thrown an SP3, and that's where a rank four five star is. You know, you're gonna see the effects or the difference in that. Um, I don't think that it would kill me, but an SP3 would do a lot more damage. Um, so, all right, cool. Fight over. That was pretty sweet. I think the last 35 seconds of that fight were all Dr. Doom SP3s. And anyway, that's it for the war, guys. Let's go look at the cards. We won this war, by the way. All right, the cards for Season 24, they're called the Capsule Design, and uh, they're inspired by NASA. That's actually the NASA font there, and uh, it's like space travel vehicles. I thought it would be pretty cool. Uh, last seasons were very space-oriented. 
So I wanted to uh, continue the theme. But yeah, PWF with the silver card. We've got Chelize with the gold card. And of course, ya yeah boy, Legacy with the Falcon platinum card. Pretty cool. Leave a like and a comment, guys. Let me know what you think of the new cards. Let me know what you think about the uh, rank four five star Doctor Doom fight. And I'll see you in the next war video. Also, subscribe. Thanks a bunch.